doing any good. I got payments to make on a Chevrolet. Goddamn scabs over there. Is that Floyd? What's he running for? Get your boogin' ass out of you, boogin' sorcerers! They're after him. Whoa. All of them. What are they up to? Hey, you... You union creep, get lost! Whoa! I'll blow your belly right out of your empty head! Hey, wait a minute, Floyd! I got... Any of you live bets go tell me when to cut logs? <laughs> what are they doing? Oh, my God, they're trying to kill him! It's hands! Are you hurt, You're going to kill me. Okay, if they get you. Are you hurt? You all right? You lousy jet bone stamper bastards. We'll get you. We're going to pull you down. <laughs> no, it's the sight of Floyd even right. Face from the dynamite coming down. <laughs> Boom! I thought I put it right in the boat. God damn union freaks. <laughs> Teach them snooping around. Hey, and then somebody over there is yelling at him, look out. How's he going to look out? The boat's going all over the damn river. He's screaming and yelling, what's happened to me? What's happened to me? But I tell you, the holy signals are hanging over us right now, eh? I mean, everything's going to be milk and honey. We're in God's own fat pocket. Well, oh, Brother Walker told us that. He told us. Yeah. And he don't hand out any crap like some of them other preachers do. God damn, some people wouldn't rather talk and eat. <laughs> It's washing out down here, Joby. Give me a hand, will you? Stag party here tonight? We got women inside. This ain't no party, Bob. This here's Mr. Jonathan Dreger. Pleasure to meet you both. He's the whole works, Bob. He's the president, not just Oregon. The whole damn friggin' union. Yeah, I think I know that, Floyd. Boy, you sure picked one hell of a night for a moonlight cruise. Yeah, it is that. But I was working over in Portland today, and I thought I might stop by and chat for a few minutes before we left. OK, go ahead. Well, is it asking too much, old buddy, if we get in out of the rain? Come on. No sense in tracking all this water into the house, Floyd. We can talk out here. Henry, this is Jonathan Drager. How are you? How do you do, sir? Viv, bring out a couple of six packs of cold ones, will you? This weather up here really plays hell with my athlete's foot. Seems like every time I come up to Oregon, it just crawls right up to my privates. Yeah, well, I hope the trip will be worth it. Did we cut the fun and games and get to the point? Well, you're gonna think I'm kind of arrogant, just barging in here to plug up the holes, Hank. Is it all right if I call you Hank? What do you think, Henry? It's OK by me. He's a boss. But I was just wondering if maybe you could hold on to everything you've got now and then sell it all later on. Sell it to somebody else, maybe. Sure. Sure, we tell the kind of company go screw themselves. I guess that gives us the privilege of selling our logs to somebody else. I get you. Well, then? Well, then what? Can't do that, Floyd. By God, you've got to do it. If we got a contract, Mr. Drager, how do you handle that? I mean, that's our word. I'm sure you gave you a word. No, thanks. Listen, I know we've got nothing against you, Independence. We're not out to put the family operations out of business. Thanks. Well, that clears that up. 
I mean, they're your friends and neighbors. Don't you think you owe them something? That depends on what they'd owe us if they were on the other end. Oh, come on now. You know what I'm talking about. Well, you see, I don't think I do know what you're talking about. You come on pretty folksy with that athlete's foot and those first names and everything, but why don't we cut through that crap and get straight on it? That suits me fine, but what am I going to tell you? I mean, you've got a town full of people here who are hurting. Now, somebody's going to have to give up something somewhere along the line. Don't you agree? Henry, you answer that one. Well, now, you just so happen to see, we get ourselves up at 4.30 every morning, go out and chop wood. That's every morning but Sunday for sure and Saturday maybe. Been doing that for a hell of a lot of years with no stink. So when you were Floyd here or General Motors or some commie pinko or my hound dog tells us we're not going to get up at 4.30, I tell you, you haven't got a whisper of a bare-ass clue what the hell this family's all about. Not a whisper. Nothing. Well, that's just about as clear a statement of 19th century philosophy as I've ever heard. Fine, give us a look at the 20th. You got all the slots and uh, compartments you stash people away in. You're going to tell us when to stop cutting and when to start cutting and who to sell to. And then pat our little bottoms and tell us what good little boys we are. Well, not yet, Bob. Not yet, you know. I'm only asking you to hang on to the logs you already have. Let me tell you something. <clears throat> might gladden your heart and dry up your athletes put overnight. And we might not make that deadline. We got three weeks of the worst logging coming up and we're liable to fall short, but let me tell you something. We are gonna bust our humps trying. I'm really sorry you feel that way. Every time you open up a paper these days, you read about violence. It's almost as if nothing gets done anymore without it. So, if these people here... Wait a minute. I think we're down to the gritty, Henry. If you're talking threats, I think you can make them plainer than that. Just what kind of violence do you have in mind? Now, I'm just pointing out the facts, that's all. Your friends and neighbors here, they say you're strike-breaking. You say you're bound to honor your word, so that's the way it stands. Well, I only speak for the Union. And we have no jurisdiction over family operations, so the Union's out of it from now on. Between you people. Whatever happens from here on out, the Union's out of it. I'm glad to have met you, Mr. Stamper. My father was a good friend of your father's many long years ago. Ah. What was his name? Phil Drager. Never heard of him. Thanks for your hospitality. Good night. Well. It'll be coming in like hell tonight. Oh, it's always coming in like hell. Life is not. It's going to carry us all off someday. Here, I'm gonna go. 
go see, though. Change much, Joey. All right, come on now. Just who the hell are you? I'm Lee, Joey. Leland. You are Lee? <laughs> I can't <laughs> believe it. Huh? My God. Lee, what's all that crap hanging down your head? Can we go over now? Why, sure, boy. Get in. We're off and sailing, boy. <laughs> hey, hey! If a son, he comes back home a daughter. Where'd you get all that hair? Gross. How you been, huh? Getting by. Good. Tell you it's about all you can ask for these damn fool socialists running the country. Come here, honey, would you? <laughs> Lee, I want you to meet my missus. This here's Jan. Hi, pleased to meet you. How do you do? And this is Tita. Hello, Tita. Now, tell me, what do you think about your old man up there, huh? He fell out of a tree about four months ago. He broke his whole left side. Well, I've been hurt worse than that. Marie, for goodness sake, I don't think we ought to keep Leland standing here on the dock. Hi. I'm Viv. Hank's wife. How do you do? Why don't you come on up? Hank's around here someplace. At least he was a few minutes ago. How are you, Swinger? You never thought you'd get back here on your own. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it is kind of strange. What are you, just passing through? Maybe. What do you think, Henry? You want to put this puppy dog up for the night? I don't know. It looks to me like some kind of New York fairy. <laughs> Boy, damn if he don't. Oh, if you two just stop it. Now, come on. <laughs> hey, Lee, how does it look to you? Pretty much the same. Where's he gonna sleep, though? Huh? Well, wherever you think. Oh, oh, I got it. Hey, Lee, you can have your old room back. We'll just move our kids out right now. Huh? You don't mind doing that, do you, honey? Well, no, no, of course not. Get up there. Hey, Lee, you see, you're all set up. Better get those kids out pretty quick, Jan. He looks kind of shook up. Well, I've been on the road three days. Well, you sure as hell been on something, Bob. You want a beer? No, no, thanks. Come on in, sit down where we can talk, huh? No, really, I am kind of tired. If I could uh, maybe sack out for a while and get myself together. Well, sure, you bet, Lee. Come on upstairs. I got your stuff. Come on. I think he's beautiful. Yeah, the son. The prodigal son returns. And that's me, right? The question is, why? Well, I think it's time for you to know the answer. You see, uh, my dear boozy mother used to get these letters. 
Every month. And who do you suppose sent those letters? Himself. And what do you suppose was in those letters? Hmm? Money. Real, honest to goodness money. I mean, it's really got to make you wonder, his being so nice to us. Hank, not my old man. Hank. And God only knows, I, I owe him an awful lot. So I just had to come up here and give him my helping hand. Now, ain't we lucky? Bunch of dumb scabs, ignorant savages, eat dirt and bugger raccoons because they don't know any better. And then here comes Leland Stamper. Knows everything. Yeah. Well, I know this, Hank. I know all there is to know about ladies who jump out of six-story windows. I'm a real expert at that. So be it, Bob. Nobody pushed. Please tell me about it. She's dead and buried. Nobody's business. You know, I, I don't remember seeing Hank at the funeral. Would you believe it, Viv? Nobody came. Nobody. What, not even anybody from her own family? Disowned her. Gave up on her years ago when she ran away to Oregon with this uh, fast-talking old widower by the name of Henry Stamper. <laughs> and if that wasn't bad enough, she had been had a, a kid by him. So nobody came. Nobody. Hey, don't you worry, Hank. We got your goddamn flowers. Hubbah! Hubbah! Save me some whistle bunks. Let's go! Let's go! Gonna stay in bed all day. Why get in shag it, Snappers? Contracts to fill. Eggs to hatch and cats to kill. No sissy shits here. Come on, let's make it and shake it, bub. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is right. Are they asleep? I think Marina's awake. Come on in here, then. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Think he's gonna make it? I don't know. He was laying in bed up there. Looked just like Rita Hayward. Morning. Morning. Hi, lady. Leland, over here. Morning. You're yeah, late. The waffles is all gone. Oh, it's okay, Henry. I saved some for him in the afternoon. You want some coffee? Yes, thank you. Come on, let's have the benefit of some of that university learning. Give us something to trigonometry. Go on, say something trigonom. Well, if you don't mind, I'd like to wag it and shag it first. Thank you. Lee, you gonna stick around? The reason I ask is we're kind of up against it. We're a little short-handed. See, we can use every last stamp, but we can get a hold of it. What do you mean he's eating here, ain't he? 
If he's gonna eat here, he's gonna work here. That's all he's working. Maybe Lee's got something to say about that. Huh? Me and Jan, we're gonna take you over to the Church of God and the Metaphysical Science. We're gonna introduce you to Brother Walker. How do you wanna do that for? <laughs> hey, I could tell you something, Lee. Thank you. You know what happened as soon as Jan and me got the call? The very instant we got saved? I mean, the very instant like, you know what happened? She got pregnant, that's what. The very instant like. Incredible. Bullshit. Want some more syrup, Lee? Anything wrong? No, everything's fine. I was just wondering, and don't the ladies ever get to say anything at breakfast? Ben's and boots. What? Get some corks for him, step all this jaw on. Hmm. Hey, wait a minute, he hasn't even said he's gonna stay yet. He's got damn boots, got him. <laughs> Come on, Lee. Try these on. And don't step on anybody, huh? I'll get you a hat. Don't you back off on that. His own mommy's sissy pants. Well, years ago, when his mommy took him away from here, he wasn't gonna cut it. I knew he'd never cut it. Well, give him a little room. What for? Well, you old screw jack. Uh, he's only half-brother to me, but as far as I've been told, he's all your son. go dogging it just because I ain't there. You keep Uncle John nice and sober. Should be a good day. Pretty good day for it. Hey, Joey, hold it. Hmm? Hold it. Just look at that. Look at that up there. Huh? What? That's my old man. Ain't he a handsome-looking devil? No getting around that. Sons of bitches. Hey, you think I dare leave my unprotected wife alone with a sheet like that? Pretty risky, eh? My God, you campfire girl's gonna get the hell out of here. <laughs> Take it easy, Henry. Hey, Leland, get on down here! Got no respect! There they are, Leland. Ain't they beauties? Hey, come on, Andy. What's happening? Quiet ain't coming at all. That's what's happening. All right. I'm Leland Stamper. Billy be Jesus. I'm your cousin Andy. Must be about 10 years now. I uh, heard about your mother. Yeah, well, uh, she's dead. Yeah. Sure am sorry, Lee. Where'd you get all the hair? It grows. Hey, fellas! Can you come over here? Can you take me across? My boat's laid out. Oh, thanks a lot, fellas. I sure do thank you for the lift. So you knew if I was got any smokes on you? I'm clear out. Got a match? Hey, you see you got a new hand here, Hank. Yeah, it's my brother Leland. In case you want to put that in your union report. Where'd you get all that hair? Well, it grows. How's it going, Les? Fine. It's great. Could be a lot better, of course. Well, I'm just going down the county line. I'm going to pick gooseberries. Imagine that. <laughs> Me, a logger. You know, some of the fellas down in that union hall are getting plenty pissed off at you. They said, they said they're gonna kick your ass to your nosebleeds. <laughs> That's what they said. <laughs> hey, wait, you know what? We got the Lumberman's Field Day coming up. Boy, I sure bet the boys would like to see all you Stamper folks out there when that gets underway. That's swell. You can build bleachers and sell tickets. Ah, thanks a lot, fellas. I 
sure to appreciate the ride. Hey, now look. You make sure that you fellas come out, yeah? work you guys do up here. Well, Leland, all you gotta do is find something else for mommy to wipe her little baby's butt with and all this neat work's out of business. Show you around. And you see that thin thing up there? You stay away from that. It flaps 30, 40 feet. It's the hall back. We don't want to waste a lot of time picking up what's left of you. Right down there. I want to go cut me a tail spar. a bitch. I'm Leland. Hi, how are you? I'm Hook. You get a 
off on that side, and I'll get off on this side, and I'll show you how to set one of these things. Okie doke. Find it? Oh, yeah, I got it. He inserted it right in that slot there. Now, right, let's get this one. Yeah, I'll let you get on the uphill side and you can push this one. No. <laughs> now what? We'll just head uphill there. We'll get out of the way. Keep coming up? <laughs> I don't think so. The little bastard done all right this morning, though. Jesus Christ! God damn it! Where'd you learn the strip act in college? Some whore of a bug bit me. <laughs> it's Carpenter Ant. Oh, shit. Well, listen to that. He can cuss, too. Don't that beat everything. Here. I guess you've done OK. You'll get the hang of it. You know what you can do with this job, King Kong? You can shove it. Uh. You got a hell of a good point there, Bob. It ain't a lot of fun, and, but it's something that we do pretty good, and it's a... You know what's gotten into me? You know what's running through my head right now? What are you doing here? What'd you come back here for?
Two men at the snag. Oh, yeah? Really? John heard it in town. The old man's down at the snag. Well, it ain't election day, so I suppose they're serving booze down there. Yeah. You think he's gonna be all right, though? The way things are in town? Well, there's about a hundred of them and one of Henry, so I figure the odds are in our favor. Who's talking about good old days? Look at the impactor which I was talking about good old days. Hell, there weren't nothing good about him except three inch and nookie. And the seat of my brand new bridges is slight. Hi, eh? How you doing, buddy? Pretty good. Hi, Henry. Hey, can I buy you a beer? Yeah. Okay. Hey, tell me a couple more beers, huh? Good to see you in a while. I guess you've been working pretty hard, though, huh? Yeah. Well, that's good. Things were going pretty good for me until about a month ago. Well, you know, I've had Gregory Peck and Doris Day all week down at the theater, but nobody's coming down to see them. I mean, bang up shows, too. The guys keep on telling me I should put on those new sex movies. Everything's all tit and butt, but uh, I just won't stoop that low. Yeah, I got a real special done to laundry, too. Three shirts for 99 cents. And a real special. But people just can't afford it. Not with a strike going on, Hank. Well, you know what I mean. Hell, you know, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, God knows you wouldn't want to do anything to hurt anybody in this town. We just want your help, that's all. Well, I've tried, Willard, but my wife won't let anybody touch my shirts. At least you knew who your friends were. What'd you say? In those days, you could trust your friends. They didn't knife you in the back. Floyd, if I was a couple months younger, I'd wrap that chair across your fat gut. Henry, be a sweet young fella and head on home. Well, I got my cane. Oh, oh boy. Hey, hey, hey. I'm sorry, Floyd. I didn't mean to do that. Be nice if that whole goddamn family dropped dead. Okay, she's set. Uh, the kids at that one. Ah, what I heard was you got a big one loose today. 
who told you that? Yeah, them things get around. Hell, even a dumb fool woman can set up a choker proper. I wonder, how would she make out if someone sought it through? What does that mean? Sought it through, Hank. Look, I'll tell you something. You get enough hair in your eyes, you can see almost anything. Keep the kids home tomorrow, huh? Why don't we all stay home tomorrow? Man the barricades. <laughs> we could um, make our stand on the bend of the river. The proud stampers. And never give a goddamn inch. Now, that's the old stamper motto, isn't it? Hmm? Words to live by for the ruling scabs of Oregon. Kid almost killed him. Still got a sense of humor. Why didn't you go hunting? I don't know. I guess I'd want the fox to win. Come on, come on, let's go. Don't you ever get a day off? <laughs> Not very often. Hmm. What do they do at a lumberman's field day, anyway? Uh, they drink beer and, and play grab ass with each other's motorcycles. been easy for you coming back here. Wasn't hard either. I mean, hell, it was the first trip I'd had all year on rubber tires. I was just sitting there one day, sitting in my room, staring at the ceiling with the gas on. Gas? Yeah, I was going for maybe 20 minutes or so, and <laughs> I got this really brilliant idea. I was going to have this last joint and go out high. So I rolled up this joint and I lit up and <laughs> boom, you wouldn't believe what happened. I mean, the windows blew out, the door caved in, I found myself on the street. Finally, the cops hauled me off to the hospital. Next thing I knew, I was getting sued by the landlord. I, I couldn't pay the hospital bill. I mean, I had to split. Why did you want to turn on the gas? Well, I was just on a bummer for about a year. And there was nobody there. Henry! Reba! Come on, girl. Henry! Henry, you can't go chasing off like that. And I need a wet nurse, Missy. I'll go to the county hospital. What about you? You never say anything. Yeah, I know. Like the strike. Doesn't it bother you? Oh. I don't think about it. Why not? Nobody asks me. 
Well, I mean, if anybody should ask, they don't listen anyway. It's the way it is. Did you know that before you came here? Huh. No. I came here... Oh, I came here on the back of a green motorcycle. All the way from Rocky Ford, Colorado. <laughs> Rocky Ford. Yep. Nobody knows it, but that's the watermelon capital of the world. I bet it is. Well, Hank came riding through there one summer, just after cutting season. And uh, my uncle threw him in jail for disorderly conduct. My uncle was the sheriff. And he got out two nights later and... There was you and Hank in the watermelon patch, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, sort of. And so you took off. Oh. I left. I left my aunt and uncle and the watermelon patch and the jail and... God, I'm riding out of there. On the back of that thing, hanging on to Hank. So anyway, here I am. I got a garden here. I got flowers and I got a German yellow canary upstairs. And they're all mine. And if that river ever comes up and carts us all off, they're still mine. That's all there is. Has it always been everything? God, no, not that first summer. <gasps> had a baby in me then. I had Hank's baby, a stamper. Everybody was fussing over me and doing for me, and even the rain held off till December. We went off to Reedsport the first night it rained, and he was born. He was beautiful. He had blue eyes and lots of brown hair, and he was dead. And there wouldn't be any more. Well, it doesn't matter now, anyway. I seem to give Hank what he wants, what he needs. He seems satisfied. Are you? Get him, Jim. You bet. Well, Henry, they sure won't be expecting us. I mean, I really don't know why we have to go through this. Sure you do. Yeah, I guess I do. Let's get out there and have some fun.
hungry? Yeah. How'd it go? Oh, I don't know. You win a few, you lose a few. Hey, Hank, hot yeah, dog or hamburger? Hmm? Hamburger or hot dog? No hamburger, I think. Ready? Stamper, you want a little football? Yeah, why not? Ronnie, Gene? A little touch football. How are you, fellas? How are you, guys? How are you? just like his big brother. Remember that real wet summer we had, kid? A lot of beds got warmed up that summer. Hank and I, we know which bed I'm talking about, don't we? <laughs> it's pretty funny lately, because everybody knew that Hank was bawling your mother. Got something. No, no. Hank. The go of me, Leland. Hank, come. Eyes. Are you all right? Mm. Whee! Mm. Whee! Whee! Yeah. Eight feet, Joby, right on the mark. We're in God's fat little pocket. Fun, huh? <laughs> Fun. Let me know. 
But if you want to leave. I'm sorry about that. Sorry about what, Hank? What the hell? Not the way you found out about me and your mother. Hey, let me tell you something, Hank. I didn't find out about anything yesterday that I didn't know already. Hey? How does that happen? Who tells 10-year-old kids about their mothers? Their mothers? Nobody had to tell me anything, Hank. I saw you. Okay, Stampers, up and at him. coming apart at the seams. I tell you, Hank, it's Orland's boys. He says they all get the flu. Or something. Or something. Yeah, he doesn't know when they'll be back. You know, he don't know the difference between a goose and a coos bay whore, but he knows when they're coming back. He knows all right. It ain't easy, Hank. The Davies boys are Orland's boys. Any of us. A little girl comes home crying every day because there won't nobody play with her. All of us dirt. It's just a couple weeks longer. They could have waited a little longer. Maybe they just want to get out while they still can. Well, we ain't making nothing but shadows around here. Let's get going. Hi, Floyd. Hi, Marie. My God. What the hell do you want? Well, <clears throat> I'll tell you. It's kind of like this. Hey, you stop! Now, that ain't no new truck, but uh, I sure do feel better. You bastard, that was my daddy's desk! Hey, Hank. Hank. Hank, listen, I gotta talk to you, Hank. Now, it's a confidence, Hank. Now, I'm, I'm talking to you in confidence. Now, I've never told anybody this before. You know, Willard, I don't think I really want the honor. No, Hank, no, wait. Hank! Hank, you listen to me now, huh? Remember last year, that girl that I hired on to help Mildred do laundry? Well, that girl and me, we... 
Well, we sort of hit it off, you know, the two of us. Well, right now, she's up in Seattle. She's living there. She's got this kid, Hank. My kid. Understand me? I didn't know you had it in you, Willard. Well, I'm supporting the both of them, damn it. She and the kid. But I can't go on any longer. Hey, Ben! I, I just can't afford to. Hank, you're gonna kill a lot of people in this town. Get to the point, will you, Willard? Look, that kid is my own flesh and blood, and I don't intend to give him up. Well, good for you, Willard. Hang in there. Now, listen to me, Hank Stamper. So help me, God. If you don't let up, I'm gonna do something drastic. I'm gonna kill myself. That's no crap. I'll kill myself. I'll make it look like... I'll make it look like an accident for the insurance money. I'll do it, so help me God, as, as sure as I'm standing right here, right now. I'll do it. Well, <clears throat> good luck. Good luck? You don't believe me. No, I do. Willard, I probably do. It's just that uh, I'm not thinking too sharp now, and good luck's about the best that I can come up with. You, you gotta admit, it's better than uh, half fun or bond voyage, so why don't we just let it rest, huh? Good luck, Willard. Listen, Hank. Hank, will you please listen to me? Don't you understand what I'm saying to you? No more deliveries. What? No more deliveries and no more credit. Hey, how do you feel about that? Hell with them. Pick them up and pay cash. No, I mean, what are you going to do about Willard Eggleston? Uh, I don't pay much attention to Willard Eggleston. He's in show business. <laughs> All right, boys, let's get going. <laughs> hey, Mac, get back up on the road to Pollard. Do you see anybody coming? <laughs> hey, the tide's moving good. They're going to be eating these logs for breakfast. <laughs> That's right. Come on with me, baby. He ain't the second stick in their log. You know, we should have done this a long time ago. <laughs> Come on over here. Let me pull on this and I can give you some slack. Yeah. Good, fine. Let's get it. She's coming up here. Yeah, let's get her here. Fine. How are you guys doing? It's going good. That's great. It's fine now. Hey, Les. Hey, hold on, Hey. What are you doing? Hey, Biggie. Hold on, Les. Hey, Les, watch out. Hey. Hey. Help. Get Biggie, get him. Help, Les. I got you, Les. I got you, Les. Help, me! I can't swim. Pull us in. I don't have anything. Well, we got to get him. Oh my God, they're gonna drift out to sea. Well, we get a boat. Don't just stand there, I can't swim! There's a phone up in that shed. I tell you, you're not gonna call that fast. Are you out of here, boy? You'll fall by that stabber house, they're gonna drown out there. Come what back the here! do anyway? Howie Elwood. Who? Howie Elwood. Uh, wait a minute. Hey, I hate to bust up the concert, but uh, there's somebody in the phone. Yeah? The thing is, Hank, that we have a kind of an emergency. Uh, where are you guys? Well, we're down uh, around your log rafts somewhere. Well, yeah, what are you doing there? We're having a little party and, uh, you know, we're log rolling. Log rolling at night? Uh, log got away from us, and Les and Biggie are hung up on it. If you could get your boat out, they should be floating by pretty soon. Can you do that, Hank? I'll get on it. You 
said he'd get on it. Oh, I bet he's gonna ask some funny questions about that raft. Well, let's get on down there and put it together. You boys look kind of wasted. Yeah, it's kind of cold. And we've been, you know... Well, you don't have to explain to us, baby. Just get in, we'll take you back up the raft. Oh, thanks. Let's go! Uh. Why get me shy at Snappers? Let's go! Bless this day. Forgot. What? Lissy's tooth, Mom, she's gonna be sore as hell. She don't get something for that tooth. Hank, you got a quarter, huh? Damn it. Here's 35 cents. That ferry's a big spender. <laughs> No. Oh. Guy takes his own life, huh? He's gotta be crazy. Willard is dead. Was I supposed to keep him alive? I didn't call him up and say, hey, Willard, jump. Don't you feel anything about it? What do you want me to do? Stay home. You can do that today, tomorrow, next week. Just stay home. <laughs> Give it up. We're not going to starve for four log booms. I never said we were. Stay home. Give an inch. Just take off your boots. We can make love after breakfast. We can make love after lunch. And old Henry will get pissed off at us like he used to. And you just laugh and close the door on him like you hey. used to. And you'll hold me like hey, now. Miss. Come upstairs now, now, right now. Please. Let her alone. Take her along. We'll have her for lunch. Well, take a good look, you son of a bitch. Like a bird, like a goddamn bird. Dumb thing just fell off last night. Oh, come on, Henry. He's been banging on that thing all night long with a ball peen hammer. You fix that saw, you fixing her. Come on, let's flap out of here. I am going down to Doc Ivan this morning, get the rest of this cast iron booger yanked off. And then finally, maybe when I'm back on your dumbass crew again, we just might get some work done. Yeah, don't just stand there looking. Let's wag it and shag it. Hey. Hank, please don't go. What the hell's all this? Henry, you tell him. You tell him to stay home. How the hell can I do that? Because there's no one wants you to work. No one. Well, I do. He does. Joby, Lee, they do. That's good enough. For what? For what? 
Well, hell, don't you know? To keep on going, that's what. To work and sleep and screw and eat and drink and keep on going. And that's all? Honey, sweet, that's all there is. It's a whole ball of wax. Come on, let's go. I'll drop you boys off the show site. Hank? need a truck anyway with a nine foot tide runner they will just float down to the pond yeah hey we can do that all right Henry, it's gonna be a bitch and it's gonna be a real ball breaker but i got an idea we can whop it what do you say Hankus? well we'll get them started henry then you can just stomp them down coming in. Better get somebody down with the mill pond. No trick to that. Good John here, he can take the pickup down, snag each one of them coming by. Okay by me. Here you are, Hank. I'll get Andy and get on it right away. <laughs> It's all right. It ain't nothing broke. And this old log come barreling down, sat right on my lap. The soft mud saved me, I guess. <laughs> Can't you move? No. I don't think so. All right. Hold it. Hold it. There's, there's something real hard that's wedged right up against my butt. Hey, what the hell happened up there? A tree slab. I think the old man got hurt pretty bad. Well, then you go on. You get him to the hospital, because I'm OK. Well, go on, Lee. I'm all right. Okay. Is 
he out? Mostly. Here, let me get a hold. I better get him into town real quick. Okay. I'll give you a hand. No, you better go see what you can do about Joe Ben. Looks like he's got a ton full of logs sitting on his lap down there. Don't worry, I'll get him to the hospital all right. You do what you can for Joby. Hank! There's a big old piece of wood that's wedged right up against my butt. It's got me stuck real good. I didn't even bust my radio, huh? <laughs> what do you think of that? <laughs> well, let me haul you out of here. Oh, no, there ain't much say. You're just wasting your time. There's something, there's something hard down there on my butt. It's holding me down. I can feel it down there. I'll go get the saw and cut you out. Yeah, all right, you do that. Hey, and Hank, you don't worry about me, huh? I'll just sit here and wait for you. Let me walk. Hey, there's a good boy. I'm glad to see you again, old sport. <laughs> Must have drowned it. it. Ain't gonna work, Hank. Hey, Hank, just leave it. It's all right. Look, look. All we gotta do, I tell you, all we gotta do is just sit here and wait. See, this here tide is gonna come in. It's gonna, it's gonna raise this thing off of me. Hell, it'll float clean away. Well, it's gotta do some rising. Well, all right. We just gotta do some waiting now. You bet. It ain't gonna work, Hank. Hey? Mark's coming off. Why don't you be a nice little son of a bitch and lie still, huh? Bass. Keep it. You keep it here. Let him have it, Leland. Okay. Hang on, Dad. It's the 
Damn it, Hank. Damn it, it's ruined. I forgot to take it off my stupid neck. Well, it'll dry out most likely. You feel it lightning, Annie? I can't tell you that I'm as cool as a witch's tit. Well, let me go on and, <sighs> and take a look. Hold it, all right. Well, how, how far do you think it's come up, Hank? I don't know, Joby. A couple of inches, maybe. Hank, it's moving! Jesus! Hey, Hank. You ain't gonna let this old river up and drown me, are you? Ask your big buddy upstairs and everything would be all right. Yeah, I can never ask him for nothing if I figure you and me can handle it ourselves. <clears throat> yeah, I suppose he's got his problems. Like this water is getting over my chin. Hey, you know, if worse gets to worse, I can always give you a mouth to mouth so this mother floats off here. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> God damn it. What if all Henry saw us, huh? <laughs> Can you imagine that old son of a bitch he'd be telling everybody at the snag you and me was kissing before we went underwater? <laughs> I don't know if I much care for that. I don't know if I much care for that either. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's gonna be okay, Hank. It was moving. It's gonna pop off any time now. Easy, easy. Whew. Hey. hey. You know, I ought to maybe put my arms around you and just kiss you a little bit first so we can get used to it, huh? Sure wish you had a head of hair like Leo. I'd make out like you was rid of Hayworth. <laughs> Hank, it's shifted, Hank. <laughs> Thank you. 
crazy son of a bitch. Stretcher, quick! Lee telephoned me from the hospital. Let's get over here. I want Lee to go over to Mill Pond. What for? To watch every log that goes by and grab the one that's flagged. Joe Ben's nailed to it. He drowned. What is it? Metacrit 28. Hemoglobin 9. Yeah. Well, look, I think you better recheck his hemoglobin and his metacrit again in a couple of hours. All right. Yeah. the kids yet. She's gonna wait until tomorrow. Are you all right? Viv? Are you all right? the door. Well, bitch is just waiting for me to die. <laughs> Wants to change the damn full sheets. God gonna let him have it. 
I'm going to bury it when I get home. Told Lee to put it in the freezer. <laughs> Watch out, Viv, don't fry it up for supper. <laughs> My God, if she ever sees that fish, <laughs> <She's> so... <laughs> oh. Come on, Danny, easy, easy. Come on, oh. lie back, lie back. I can't lie back. Got things to do. Got a contract to fill. Got eggs to hatch and cats to kill. And I'm warning. You get Joby, figure out where we stand. Too. My God, he really cut it today, Hank, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Don't you believe him? Who? What? Um, they're trying to put me in my grave. I'm not even close. Not even shout distance. Oh, Hank, I said that dumb quack doctor don't leave me alone. <laughs> oh, Lordy, Lordy. Son of a bitch. Could you do that for me, please? I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Was that the hospital? Yeah, not good. to believe, isn't it? How you can just pack up all those years in one little suitcase. I'm not even taking the goddamn canary. Maybe I ought to leave with you. I thought about that. That's not what you're looking for. That's not why you came back here. to stay with Jan for a while. And then, I don't know, I'll just get on with the rest of my life. Oh, I should have left a long time ago. Oh, the old man didn't make it. Oh, I can't believe this day. We'll get together in a couple of days and see where we stand. Hey, we're finished. Nobody's got any steam left. Come on, kid, let's go home. 
Okay, but there's not much there anymore. Everyone's gone. Viv, too. She's headed off by herself. She said she could have picked a better day. People do what they want, kid. I don't tell them what to do. Never give an inch, huh? What do you want from me? You want to see me crash? You bet I would, King Kong. I'd love that. I'd like to see you make the same splat my mother did when she hit the pavement. You're still laying her off on me, huh? Well, let me tell you something, kid. I was 14 and she was 30. Maybe you're old enough now to help me figure out who the hell was banging who. The old man said you really cut it today.
Frank Stanford just rented a tugboat for Mama Olsen. That son of a bitch aims to run them goddamn logs! You want to finish it now, Hank? I ain't got time to cold cocky this morning, Bob. I got work to do. You know, Hank, I thought all you dinosaurs were dead. Well, if they want this one, they're going to have to shoot them. Just like King Kong, you got to knock them down. Get off them goddamn logs, bub. They're half mine now, bub. What are you doing? Well, hook on those last two rafts. You gonna take all four of them? I am now. I know he can't make it, but he's out there trying, damn it! Now, now you get Sorensen, Evans, and Biggie Newton, and you tell him to get their ass over to the Stamper house right this minute. You think you can handle this tug, bub? With my head in a sack. Give me that rope over there. You better keep it going right down the middle, bub, or I'm gonna kick your ass from here to Dixie. Okay, I'll make the deal. I don't kick the crap out of you this year, you don't kick the crap out of me next year. Tide's really running, let's get this mother on the road. Nobody can make that run by himself. 
Well, suppose he does take off with a couple of rafts. Now, could anybody just show me how he's going to make it on his own? Well, he'd get hung up on the first bend he'd come to. Of the family of man. 